All right, everybody, and welcome back to the free agency madness episode of Catfish on Ice. This is episode 137. This we are reacting on the day of free agency. Um, everything that's happened or everything that hasn't happened, might I say. <laughs> um, right. I'm, be, I'm being joined by, by, by the friend of the show, a really good friend of mine. Up, and he writes for Predlines. He writes for Titan Size. If you want some good Tennessee Titans coverage, well, you need to be following my buddy and friend of the show, Max Greenberg. Uh, Max, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm certainly anxious to see what's happening in the rest of free agency because there's a lot still that hasn't been done, including with the Preds. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, so that that's kind of what I was alluding to. So we were all just expecting like kind of one of the craziest free agent days that the Predators have had in a while. Like normally they're not big partakers on free agency day. Like they aren't. They're just not that type of team normally. Poyle, for whatever reason, normally doesn't dip his toes too deep in the free agency pool. But for some reason, I was sold a false bill of goods this year, and I thought that maybe he was going to um, jump into the deep end a little bit. And I would have been okay with it. It could still happen. I mean, it's not like other signings can't happen later on. But as of now, sitting at before 8 o'clock Eastern time on free agency day, the Preds still have not done much. What what do you make so far, Max, of what the Preds have done today or haven't done today? You know, I think my, my stance is certainly complicated. You know, I'm certainly I certainly want something to happen because we went we saw Poyle go out there. You know, he's been saying since May we we want to spend to the cap, and he particularly talked about the second line and how that needs to get better. But in terms of the deals that have been signed, I, I can't say there's a lot that's been signed. I really be, that I really think that we really missed out on. I, I, I personally was not a huge fan of Andrew Kopp the, the, and because mm. I don't really think he's enough of an offensive driver. I, I didn't want anything to do with that. I know you were saying that you were thinking about Vincent Trocek, but for the term he got, I, I was, well, let either. me, well, I was at first I was, but then cooler has prevailed. And I realized, do the Preds really need a top six center right now? Right. Yeah. Where would you put him? So I kind of backed off that ledge. That yeah. was kind of early going when I was first looking at the free agent market. And then I kind of had a change of heart. And real, I do like Vincent Trocek. As the yeah. player, if there was a need for him on the Preds, I would love him. I love Vincent Trocek. Really solid player. But really? um, as far not as – uh, not, not really, just not the right fit for the Predators and the puzzle pieces they're trying to fit. And you bring up Andrew Kopp. Uh, that's another example. He's another center that, um, right. again, I mean, seemingly speaking, the Preds have their top two centers. I know we're not totally sold on Ryan Johansson, and but he still has value as a top six center. He does. So, so I mean – what what would you do at that point if you added a Vincent Trocheck to the top six? It that would just create like a it log jam. Off-fit. Yeah, so I, I mean, was I was all pay a guy that much money to play on the third line. You're just not. Yeah, so I was all in on getting getting a winger. Get and there were so many out there, and I was all in on getting a young player for a very modest, cheap deal. And I saw plenty of those out there. I know they're not all super popular and that's why they're cheap. I mean, you can't have it both ways. You can't go out and get a cheap, modest player that also is just perfect and does everything the way you want it to do. So I was willing to take a chance on a Max Domi or a Kubalik from the uh, Blackhawks or one of these types of players. I was all in on uh, Barakovsky. From now, that's the, one uh, I really am. I'm really, if there's one I'm wish we didn't miss out on this. And he, he's, it was under six million a year that he signed yeah, for like I mean, five years, five some million a year. Yeah, I would have been heart out of all those players. So I, I don't know if you checked out my article, Max, on Pred Lines. Again, Max Greenberg like joining me. Yes, Max Greenberg's joining me. He writes with Pred Line on Pred Lines from with me. Me and him are the one, two solo act, two, two solo yeah. acts right now on the team, on the Pred Lines team. But, uh, We've been pumping out articles, and Max is awesome. But, yeah, so I put out a Predlines article basically with my short list of five guys, and I didn't list one center on my top five, and that was for a reason because, yeah, that's just not a fit. 
but Barkovsky was a big one for me. I had Max Domi on there. I know Max Domi has had a couple really bad years, but I would have been for what he was signed for one year for 3 million. Come on now. That's like chump change. Like they could have pulled that off and who knows, maybe he, maybe he shows up next year and scores 20 to 25 goals. He's capable of doing that. So I just thought there was bargain deals out there they could have made that I'm, just, I'm a little upset just, they didn't do. It's just weird that we missed out on a guy like Domi when it seems like the Blackhawks signed him with intentions to trade him at the deadline because they're not looking. I mean, we saw what they did trading the Brinkett, and they've had a season where an off season where it's like everything must go, and bringing in a guy like Domi does not really make make much sense for them. Like, why why do they bring him in unless they're going to try and trade him at the deadline? Yeah. Because they're totally in rebuild mode right now. Yeah. yeah. So um, a little bit of an odd um, combination there. Domi to the Blackhawks. Didn't necessarily see that coming. But, yeah. um, um, you know, it's one of those things where I just feel like – I feel like the Predators have a gift card that expires at midnight tonight. Right. And they're, you can't roll that money over and they're just letting money, you know, expire on a, on a card. Right. That's that's kind of the analogy I'm thinking of right now, and I know yeah, they can make signings. Just, I I know they can make signings the next day, and today's not the only day. But that shelf is getting very very empty right, right now. I mean, as far as adding a top six quality player, it's it, it's pretty slim at this point. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. And the analogy you're talking about, like with the gift card that expires, we were playing with fire the whole time with Philip Forsberg. Luckily, he got re-signed. But he almost hit free agency. We let that drag out for way too long. That's another example. Poyle just waiting for the last minute to get. At these least they got done. it I done, though. Say, I, I, I'll still take it. Right. I will say, like, I will. I will say though, um, Johnny Goudreau just signed with Columbus, and the reason I bring that up is because they effectively just got Patrick Lyonet out of Columbus now, and he's someone. Could we make a play to trade for Patrick Lyonet? And That's you never cool. know. What what if we and we could the trade market's always an option. You never know. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I I just can't sit here and believe personally <laughs> that Poyle is not gonna make a move of some sort. Because you still got, got guys like Dylan Shrome is out there, you know, mm-hmm. Niederreiter's out there, Phil Kessel's out there. There are options out there. So you bring up Phil Kessel, Phil the Thrill. For oh, per, for personal reasons, I want to add him just because I like him and I think he would um he would add some energy to the locker room. He would add some interest to the team, but he's not going to be a big mover of the needle as far as the team, you know, really getting right. that You're much right. better. I do think he could he could give you a lot of value in the playoffs if they make the playoffs again next year, which we should expect them to do possibly, but um he he's not the big needle mover that some of these other players I thought could have been. And right. he's an aging player. And that goes completely against what I just said, which is I would actually like to, them to keep pursuing that younger model of players. That's why I really liked Cuba league. That's why I like Burakovsky. Right. Those players that are in that age range of 25 to 27 is kind of where I was at. I guess I could have specified with that. I would not just want a Phil Kessel and that's it. I very much love, I mean, and I don't, and the Preds probably cannot afford it. I would very much love, like, if you went out and maybe got another player and Kessel, I think that'd be great. They still have the money to do that, and they could do that and still, the, the possibly. The we make, it could happen. And we definitely don't think, as we're recording this right now, You're if you're listening the following day, then it's quite possible that a move's already happened since then. But as we're sitting here right now on free day one free agency night, um, there, there are Phil Kessel still out there. There, uh, there's some, and guess who else is still out there? The big headliner is still out there, and that's Andre Palat. Right. And another uh, point I made up, I made earlier, and I sent it to our like private groups. I don't know if you saw it, but at the time I sent the message, Gaudreau was out there, Palat is still out there, John Klingberg's still out there, and who else? There was one. Who, is there? Who was? What is there? Another big name? I thought there was another big name. Is Kadri still, still out there? Like, yeah, all right. So, hey, hold yeah, on, hold on. Time out. Time out. Up. Let me give a full disclosure to everybody because it really seems like I haven't done my homework today. I am in the process of moving to Florida. It's been very yes. well illustrated on the podcast all summer that I am moving to the Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg area. I'm literally in a hotel room tonight, and um, I don't even know what town I'm in. I'm still in Georgia. Where am I at? 
me look it up. Valdosta, Georgia Valdosta. is where I'm at right so now. So you're by, you're by the Florida border on this. Okay, yes. I knew I was near the Florida border. I really did not know what town yeah. I was in. But um, yeah. I will say that I was very much in the dark on the road, uh, not knowing exactly up to the minute what deals were happening. So there were there were moments on my drive today where I was thinking, have the Predators done something big and I'm the only person on this earth that doesn't know about it right now? I felt that way. No, but, let, me, let me tell you, I was at work today and at work I had – a bunch of so I'm and where I'm at work right now. I'm currently training for my role, and I had classes like all throughout the day. And I free agency. I want to be on my phone and like check Twitter constantly, but I couldn't yeah. do that. So anytime I get the opportunity and I would look on my phone, I'd be thinking, "Oh, did we do something? Do we do something?" Yeah, and nothing ever happened. But yeah, I mm-hmm. was there was a while. I was I was in the dark as well, and I was I, I, of course I wanted to just look at my phone, but I guess it doesn't work that way. Yeah, I mean, all they really did today was make some uh, AHL moves. They made plenty of AHL moves, which, hey, those have their importance too. Yes. I'm not trying to make light of it. They do. I'm not trying to make light of it at all. They got Devin Cooley, who is widely regarded as their AHL goalie. Um, he will be with Iroslav Askarov next year in Milwaukee. And Cooley does have – I mean, I don't know if Cooley's ever going to be an NHL caliber goaltender, but he certainly has a lot of value on the AHL level. So that's cool to see uh, Cooley sign. Um and then they got a defenseman that does kind of give me a little bit of interest. Like I got to do more research on him because I honestly don't know a ton about him. But Kevin uh, Gravel, who is um, really toted as a raw, gritty, penalty-killing type of defenseman that might be a, um, a rotational player in this defensive core, which is really what the Predators have kind of uh, focused on more than anything this offseason, which we didn't yeah. totally expect. They've already gotten Ryan McDonough into the mix. Yeah. And and then, so, um, yeah, they get this. Uh, so they get uh, Kevin Gravel, who played in the Calgary Flames farm system, but he's also played plenty. He's played 109 NHL games. And his big, big thing about him is he's a very, very good penalty killer, apparently. Yeah. So, I'm not totally against that. I mean, I know it's a very modest move, but hey, I'm cool with it. And I'll be honest, I never heard of these guys, but I mean, they, these they, these guys serve their importance because because uh, if when injuries happen, you need depth and guys that can step up on, on third pair when they need they need to, which is why. And we were discussing the other night. I still believe there's a chance that the Preds could trade Dante Fabro because if we're looking to create some cap here, and and we have guys that, like we have Borvietsky who. At best right now, with the way the roster is constructed, he doesn't have an opening spot, so he could get in there. And then the guys we signed today could rotate every once in a while if poor Vietzi gets injured. I mean, that, if you want to clear some cap and bring in a guy like Lion A and be able to, if that's the way you can afford him, then maybe that's how you take a shot. I, like, I really like that you brought up uh, Lion A, uh, Max, because I don't, I don't see his name circulating in Pred circles really that much. So the fact that you brought that up is pretty interesting, and it's it's definitely a possibility. You've got to think there's that no Poyle, way the Jackets will be able to keep him. There's just not. You've got to you've got to think that David Poyle has something up his sleeve still. He can't you be done to. yet, and it might be on the trade market route. Um, I got to throw some love to another good friend of the show, uh, Matt Hardesty, who also does some stuff with Renegades of Puck as well. Um, really good friend of the show as well. Yeah. He brought up some good points. Like, look, like I'm tired of the Preds. Yeah. Doing just enough to maybe win a first round. That's I not what I care about. Right between you guys. Yeah, he wants. He wants to. Um, he either wants to be a true legit cup contender, or he wants to more focus on the youth and 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 building the team up from the ground up. And I totally yeah. respect that yeah. um, strategy. Uh, it feels like David Poyle is on the fence and doesn't know which way he wants to go. So mm-hmm. that's kind of what makes it hard. You know, devil's advocate speaking, that goes completely against signing a Ryan McDonough. As great as Ryan McDonough might be for the short term, he is an aging player. So that goes against that strategy. So it's really hard to figure out what David Poyle wants and what he's trying to accomplish. And I've been saying, if you follow me on Twitter, I've been saying all summer, a trade makes more sense than free agency because you can get more guys that that fit what the Predators need right now. More younger guys who can steer us in the direction of guys for the present and future. You did say that. You wrote a really good article. I want to say that was like, what, a few weeks ago you wrote that? Yeah. It was a really good not one. Just the article. I've been tweeting constantly, trade over yeah. free agency. Yeah. Well, well, 
we'll have to wait and see what happens, but I definitely think yeah. there's a good chance. Um, okay, so let me ask you this then. Do you think, with everything that's happened so far this offseason from the Predators, do you think they've gotten better? Do you still, still think, honestly, they just shuffled the deck a little bit, but they're still for, probably not a uh, – more than maybe at the very best, they might be a second round team, but that would be the very top of the mountain for them. Or yes. do you think that they've actually gotten, do you think they've actually gotten better and they've got a good chance to maybe be a second place team in the central next year? I think the second thing you said to where we could be a second round team, right? With the way the team is currently constructed. And that's the so absolute that's ceiling. The, I think that's the absolute ceiling right now because uh, you see, that's not good enough. Yeah. It's not good enough because you, you look at the, the way the, the defense is, and we talked about the other night, they have a good defense right now. You got Yossi and I, I'm going to guess Eklund on the first pair, McDonough Carey on the second pair, and Fabro Lozon. I don't know about pair. that. I got to break away from you there. I'm not breaking up Yossi and Carrier. I'm sorry. They played so well Fair together. Enough. And I don't think it's I don't think it's right to demote Carrier when he didn't well, wasn't, know. Wasn't didn't, Yossi playing with Fabro most of the year? Carrier played with Yossi too. Okay. We'll have to wait way, and we, see. But we know they the shuffled top, them around a little bit. But we know what the we. I think we can agree the top four is going to be a combination of Yossi, McDonough, Eckholm, and Carrier. Oh, for and sure, bottom, yeah, yeah. And then the bottom is McDonough. Excuse me, Fabro and Lozon. They got Saros and that. You're not going to be giving up a lot of goals at all. And if Fabro, I mean, if at, Fabro sticks around, it's Fabro, Lozon. You're rotating a combination of Borovietsky right. and maybe this new guy they just signed. Um, uh, on today, actually, the AHL guy, he could be a rotational guy as well. I don't think you ought to make that move today if you don't have aspirations to also fit him in because you got to think about it. It's a low key move, but Jeremy Davies is gone. David yeah. Ference is not working out very well right now. Uh, so suddenly their um, AHL depth really took a hit. So yeah. they took care of that today by adding some AHL quality players to fill in that hole that with Jeremy Davies being gone now. So um, they did have some, they did do some productive things today. That was just on a very, very low scale. But you got, you, I think if we really want to, if we really want to say that this team could actually go far in the playoffs, you got to make a move for another forward. You really got to, that, that second, you have to do something for the second line kids. If you really think about it, the second line last year with Joe Hansen, he had nobody around him. So the second line last year basically didn't exist hardly. Oh, they're, they're like you just said with the combination of Soros and this defensive core and net after or on the team after adding um, Ryan McDonough. McDonough. There's no reason why this team can't be a top ten defensive team in the league as far as giving up goals. Like they they they, they should be they should be a very difficult team to score against next year Absolutely. if everything goes properly. Now, obviously, what hinges on that is drastically improving on their penalty box minutes. Yes. I mean, because you can be a great defensive team all you want, but if you're constantly in the penalty box like they were last year, they yeah. led the league in penalty minutes by a long shot. Yeah, um, it wasn't close. And fighting majors. If they can correct that, which Luke Cunning's gone, he that was 99 penalty minutes right there, if, I, if the number's correct in my head. So he's that, gone. I didn't actually know that much. Wow. It was 99. He was third on the team in penalty minutes, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it's so, the, the scary part about that. It's not like he was even fighting a ton. Like Janot and Borbietti were the main fighters. They he were just, just sloppy like penalties. Minutes. They were just really bad. There's a there there there's a difference between taking penalties that are needed and penalties that are in the right moment, and just taking awful penalties that stop your momentum and bury you in a hole. And unfortunately, yeah. as much as I like the guy, Luke Cunning was just he was uh, just the worst part about that. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's it's just what it is. What it is so he's gone now. So he's your he's one of your biggest. I think Tanner Janot, as he gets older and more mature, he's still always going to commit a lot of penalties because he plays that way. But I think right. he'll he'll curb it down. I think it's going to be a primary focus this off season. Is hey, we cannot repeat that next this next season as far as going to the penalty box. Right. That's probably why they that's probably why they shopped Luke Cunningham in the first place was because of that. So right. I mean. I think they're going to be a very, very quality uh, defensive team. The problem is, will they be able to also be a good a, a team that can hang with the cream of the crop when it comes to put your Colorado Avalanches, your teams like that, and, and can they also score 
uh, three to four goals per game, closer to that four goals per game average. That's what I wanted to see them um, rectify in free agency is getting yeah, another player. And it's going to hinge on that because and to answer your question earlier, I think the Preds are a slightly, slightly better team because if you really think about it, you know, I'd rather have McDonough on the team than like Cunning and Cousins who are both gone. And that's essentially the big difference with the team right now. But it's still not good enough. And we, we need that punch in that top six to yeah. get over the hump. You, and, you know, ever since, you know, ever since they lost Craig Smith and I'll never get over this. Cause I, I mean, he was just one of my favorite players and they lost him. They could have totally afforded him and paid him what he was owed. And he, he still could have been very beneficial to them last season. If he was still on the team, um, they've, they've had a hard time replacing Craig Smith. That's the player I think about that. They still have not, ever figured out a way to replace because Craig Smith was that type. He was never going to going to be a 40 goal scorer necessarily, but that's okay. Craig Smith was the type of player who would score the clutch goals. He would be in the right moment at the right time. He would show up when you needed a big goal and he was a walking 20 to 25 goal scorer. Yeah. And for some reason, the press thought, thanks, but no thanks. You can go ahead and go somewhere else. And, and I, I still have not forgiven the Predators front office for, for letting Craig Smith go like that. And I still think there's a chance we get, especially if we get Lion A, that's an, an upgrade over Craig Smith in terms of what well, he's yeah. going to yeah, I, I like the lot. Hey, you've got me really, really intrigued by by bringing up uh, Patrick Lion. At the Lyonnais, same time, so though, really- we're probably setting ourselves up for disappointment if we really think about it. Ah, uh, well, you know. All right, real quick, we've been joined by Max Greenberg to round out episode 137, our NHL free agency madness episode on this July 13th, 2022. A lot of fun. We expected the press to do a little bit more today, but maybe they got more up their sleeve later on. We'll see. I really think Coyle does. I really do. But Max, I want to ask you one question before it's over. First of all, I got to meet Max for the first time in person. We live in this world where everything's done digitally, you know, with Zoom and with everything. So, you know, you you build these relationships with people and you become really good friends with people without even meeting them in person. That's kind of what I consider uh, Mac, what I consider you, Max, is a really good friend that I just had never gotten to meet in person. We got to meet the other night. It was my last night in Nashville before I made the move. And uh, it was awesome meeting you, man. We got to talk some Preds in person. We got to have a couple drinks and it was a lot of fun, man. Oh, yeah. No, I was. I definitely knew I had to do something before you're heading out of town because you know I, I live here in Nashville now, so it was super easy to get it done. Well, you got to you got to hear my bullshit in person for a change. <laughs> yeah, like you've always you always get to hear it in podcast, but you actually got to see me in person spew the right. uh, the bullshit that I p- spew sometimes. But it was a lot of fun. I thought you were making sense in terms of at least your Preds takes made perfect sense. I thought. Except, All right, except, last well, question here. Take, but like you, but like that didn't happen. You quickly went back on that. It felt like, yeah, I, I just like the player. I think I think I was kind yeah. of uh, misguided by the fact that I do really like Vincent Trocheck as the yeah. player. All right, last question: Who is your biggest winner and your biggest loser today in NHL free agency, um, all around? Winner. I know I'm I gonna, threw a curveball at you there. You didn't see me coming. I'm, I'm going to say winner. I'm going to say the Ottawa Senators. They signed That's Claude Giroud to a three-year deal. And not yeah. just in free agency, but you look at the, what they've done this offseason, what they're building, and that top six in particular is stellar. Mm-hmm. Is it, you got Josh Norris, Tim Stutzla, Drake Batherson, Giroud, and there's two other players. I forgot who they were, but... They're going through the rebuild the right way. They are. Yeah, they like are. They're... they're um, I it's not forgetting who else. Oh, the brink necess- they just traded. The brink they just traded for, of course. I can't believe I forgot that. It's not. It's not a team that they're going to necessarily make big waves next season. But they they clearly have a vision. I think they can surprise people. They might. They might make the playoffs. But but yeah, that's a good choice for your winner. Um, mm-hmm. Who's your loser? Don't say the Predators. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. As they're sure not the that, losers. Honestly. Uh, well, honestly, probably Philadelphia. Philadelphia, yeah, that's a good one. I was because thinking that too. I, I mean, quite honestly, I didn't even think about it because I, I knew they probably couldn't do anything, but they're going out and they want to make the move for Goudreau and they want to do all this stuff and they end up with nothing. And we saw they were last year. That that team's going to be bad for a while with how their contracts are set up. Mm-hmm. I think. like they And they, they thought they were going to be able to do something for some reason. They just couldn't do anything. 
Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, Philly's a good choice for the losers. I would also throw the Chicago Blackhawks in there. I know that they're doing it on purpose because yeah. they're tearing everything down, but it's kind of, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to see it happen to the Blackhawks, but at the same oh. time, it's kind of, it's kind of pitiful because I mean, two years ago they had a chance to make the playoffs and then now all of a sudden they're just like a, a train wreck. Like, so I would call them a losers. And then unfortunately I hate the exact opposite. I actually hate to see this team be a loser on free agency day but it's been a rough 24 hours for the Calgary Flames. It really, really has. With Johnny and, Goudreau. It, 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 what really sucks is like last night, even we didn't, we knew it last night that he wasn't coming back. And, yeah, and they've that, still got work to do too. They've still got a, uh, some RFAs to take care of. So they, they've had a, they've had a, a spot right now where they could, they could very easily decide, you know, we've got players whose contracts expire between now and the next two years, including Matt Kachuk being an RFA right now. And they could very well decide, you know what, it's, it's easy right now just to blow it up and rebuild and get assets for was, the future. That's actually what I was about to say. That they, they might go from being they they might go from being a Stanley Cup contender to being a full rebuild team within one season, which is kind of crazy. I don't think they will, but it's very possible. Yeah. It, it, wouldn't, All right. it wouldn't it wouldn't not make sense. Max, it's been a lot of fun, man. You know, you're always welcome on the podcast. This is episode 137 of Catfish on Ice that you've been listening to with Chad Minton and Max Greenberg to round out episode 137. Thanks for listening, everybody. Tweet the show at Catfish Ice. The next time I see you great folks, I will be on the beach, probably sipping a margarita. Take care, everybody. Catfish on Ice, episode 137.